has been my mom and she told me in a situation where i was nervous with tears in my eyes she told me that rajesh in life either a situation will control you or you need to control the situation that one statement in 1982 transformed my life my way of looking at life and my way of living life that is exactly what i felt when i read each and every word that has been written in this wonderful book i love to tell people that when you write a book on a particular subject you become an authority on that subject and with that i would like to congratulate uh, mrs surekha raj shrivastava for such a massive milestone that you have achieved in your life and fr believe me friends every word is connected so much to a real life situation and touching your hearts that you will feel emotional reading every word i would not want to end this evening without sharing a few paragraphs and a few pages from this book and sharing it with each one of you who's been here i would love to say that on a warm summer evening in the month of may having so many people attending this evening of a book launch speaks volumes of the relationships that this wonderful couple have dwelled upon have collected together the true wealth of life is the number of friends that you have and definitely your quality of life depends on the quality of people that you have as your friends like mr sanjay govilkar so aptly put up that you need to have minimum of four friends they have multiplied by that that four by many many times and here is a hall full of people waiting for this uh, joyous occasion to enjoy the celebration of this particular book being launched uh without taking much time i would love to share something that's printed in this book it is not only printed in this book but it is now printed in my heart and every human being who is going to read this book the words are going to be printed in his heart forever uh like dr deepak i think is uh, rightly named deepak the light of life for all the aspirational people suffering cancer and when they come ag across a personality like you i am sure they look towards life and life in a very different way it was so aptly put by you in your speech on how you need to conquer the terrorist called cancer and hang it the way the indian government thanks to mr sanjay govilkar hang kasab the terrorist so that's what uh, surekha has done it's an amazing way of leading life i would like to begin with the forward that i wrote in this book uh, for surekha for the work that she's done and i would like to begin from there as a long time family friend i have had the privilege of knowing surekha shrivastava and her husband raj for many years please excuse me i'll be taking first names since i'm reading it from the book otherwise i have immense respect love and regards for this wonderful gentleman mr rajkumar shrivastava and his beautiful wife surekha but i'll be taking first names because i'm reading the book through our shared experiences and conversations i have been a witness to surekha's extraordinary journey one that is marked with resilience courage and unwavering zest for life her battle against cancer and multiple health issues spanning over 3 decades is a testament to her unbreakable will and impactful and powerful determination dodging diagnosis is more than just a memoir it is a powerful tribute to the strength of the human spirit surekha's honest and heartfelt account of her experiences serves as a guiding light for anyone navigating life's toughest challenges through her words she provides an intimate look into the physical emotional and social hurdles that come with a life changing diagnosis while emphasizing the importance of compassion understanding and unwavering support from loved ones i am deeply grateful to surekha for sharing a story with the world and i know that her words will continue to inspire and empower generations to come now with this i would like to share a few paragraphs from this wonderfully written book and trust me friends every word resonates with warm feelings and looking at life in a very different way so i would just like to read this couple of paragraphs uh where it's she is written while grappling with cancer and its aftermath an unusual piece of news surfaced from ahmedpur gossip mongers seemed to be in abundance spreading the unfounded rumor that i had already passed away and that raj was considering remarriage the news of my surgery provided fodder for speculation 
leading people to entertain various thoughts. As the rumor reached our doorstep, I looked into Raj's eyes and uttered, you don't have to stay with me. You can find someone else. Well, generally, wives test their husbands by saying so. <laughs> My message to the men is, please don't fall prey to that. It's a trick. It's a trap. Even if you are not going to be having cancer, she will make sure you are crucified well. So don't commit that mistake. But all know Rajkumar Srivastava. It's an amazing commitment. Knowing one year after marriage that the wife is suffering from cancer and standing like a rock beside her. I think what Mr. Sanjay Govilkar said is so true that behind every successful woman, definitely there is a man. And that is what Rajkumar Srivastava has been throughout this 33 years of undeterred battle with a terrorist called cancer. It's an amazing feeling to be a part of this book by reading it. He responded with a very hearty laugh, embracing me tightly. Don't be silly, he reassured. You're the only one I want. I'm not going anywhere. His words conveyed a steadfast commitment, providing comfort and dispelling any doubt that may have surfaced amidst the baseless rumors. What I feel by reading this book and while reading this book is medicines and our willpower has definitely played a very critical role uh, in the life of Sureka. But I think what's more promising and which, which gave more benefit than the medicines was the undeterred support that her husband, the, the person of your life who's with you 24 bar 7, the kind of support that got extended, I think that impacted more than all the medicines that you took and the yeah, quantum of medicines yeah, that she has taken. <laughs> Believe me, friends, one could start a medical store with that quantum. <laughs> that is the quantum of medicines that she has taken. I'll come to it a little later. So uh, we all present here must have witnessed her beautiful daughter's marriage. I was also privileged to be there. And uh, she has named the chapter so beautifully. It's chapter 29 where she... The heading of the ch chapter is a surgical wedding planner, a surgical wedding planner. And I'll tell you why this is the title. As the final months of 2021 unfolded, I found myself hesitating to proceed with a surgery that Dr. Venkat had strongly recommended for immediate attention. The significance of this surgery lay in the need to ureter reconstruction, a crucial step following the previous procedures. These are all medical technical terms. Uh, I'm sure you'll understand it while you read the book. Although Dr. Venkat insisted on prioritizing the surgery without delay, he ultimately respected my decision to postpone. Now that's a mother's heart. And that's why we celebrate the Mother's Day. She postponed her surgery because her beloved, beautiful daughter is getting worried. That's how a woman puts up priorities in her life. Somehow, I couldn't bring myself to opt in for this particular surgery. Perhaps it was my own reservation or perhaps it was because I didn't want my surgery to eclipse one of the joyous moments of my life. In December, my beloved daughter Sonika Srivastava was to be wed to Raghav Reheja, a classmate from her undergraduate days in computer engineering. Raghav embodies a graceful blend of composure, maturity, refined manners, humility, and a grounded authenticity deeply rooted in his distinguished Punjabi heritage. In fact, I have copied this paragraph and texted it to my wife, asking us to asking her to you know create such, such kind of sentiments for me also as a husband. <laughs> it is so well worded that it was really touching to read all this. Raj and I were naturally elated for our daughter as she embarked on this new chapter of her life. She had found her life partner in Raghav. Consequently, by September, we were already halfway through the meticulous planning of Shona's wedding. That's what she calls her lovingly. In September, Raj and May, I made a significant decision regarding the return gifts for the wedding guests. We opted for dinner sets made of kasa a unique alloy. To procure these gifts, we set our sights to Guleshwar, the largest wholesale utensils market in Mumbai. Given the distance from our home in Andheri, a western suburb of Mumbai, a day trip was in order. We all know how much time it takes from Andheri to South Mumbai sometimes. You know, you reach Dubai faster. 
<laughs> but I love to say that you should always live in a city which is overcrowded because that is a land of opportunities. So no grievances and complaints against the traffic jam ever. However, with numerous wedding preparations on our plate and time constraints, I saw an opportunity to multitask. Friends, the next paragraph is very interesting. During that visit to Buleshwar, we connected with a shop owner who was acquainted with us. In a very gracious gesture, he offered us an aerated drink. While Raj accepted the offer, I declined. The owner insisted on my partaking, was met with my explanation that I was on my way to JJ Hospital for surgery. Understandably, the shock registered on his face. He was astonished that I was considering shopping at such a critical juncture, given the imminent hospital admission. Raj clarified that it was my insistence, driven by the desire to leave no stone unturned for Shona's wedding. We successfully placed an order for the CASA dinner sets and then proceeded to the hospital for my surgery. Now, isn't that amazing? In the hospital, I found myself so immersed in wedding planning that I nearly forgot about the impending surgery. Raj and I were deeply involved in planning every detail of the wedding, from the menu to the guest list. This heartfelt discussion held within the hospital confines brought a touch of amusement to the hospital staff witnessing our devoted wedding planning. Can you imagine, irrespective of the situation and the circumstances, irrespective of the location or the occasion, the mother absolutely defined the way the wedding needs to happen. After the surgery, I rested for a couple of days and was ready to jump back into the wedding planning, which incidentally had been going on for a year. We had meticulously planned every tiny aspect. Couple of times, amidst overseeing renovations at home, having meetings with the caterer, I got extremely tired. So during the car rides, while Raj was driving, I would recline the seat, seek some desperately needed rest before we reached the destination, and I had to bounce back for the next task. I was enjoying every moment and didn't want to miss out on anything. I also didn't want to leave any task unfinished. That was the determination which has definitely made her live the life that she's living for the last 33 years and growing stronger. I come to the chapter number 32, a very interesting chapter. I loved reading this. Crisis in the mountains. A very, a very interesting happening has happened here. Now, in these mountains, when they finished their Vipassana course, our journey ended to Gangtok and we were fortunate to have sharing as our companion. Now, here the tables turned and the dynamic police officer, Mr. Rajkumar Srivastav, was at the receiving end. All his life, he was the man who was getting treatment done for his beautiful wife. And on this occasion, during this trip, it was the other way around. When you go to greater heights, you are devoid of oxygen and you feel breathless. So all the oxygen kits that were procured by Sureka, by this time she was an extremely intelligent medical planner also, apart from the wedding planner. And she had all medications in place, including uh, provision for uh, oxygen. The interesting part is on the walks in those mountains, it was Mr. Rajkumar Srivastava who felt breathless and lost consciousness and went unconscious. And that was a trying situation for Surekha, who didn't know what to do. And whomever she was calling, the recipient of every call was pleasantly surprised that it is not for her that she is making the call, but it is for Rajkumar Srivastava that the call has happened. He was unconscious and this time, she was the doctor attending to Rajkumar Srivastava. So whatever she received as medical support from Rajkumar Srivastava, in all the 33 years of life, this was her giving back to Rajkumar Srivastava and she didn't stop there. He regained consciousness. When you read this chapter word by word, you will feel as if you are witnessing this happening in real sense in front of you on a movie screen and you are actually feeling the entire journey that they have gone in the two, three days of time in a God forsaken location with very less medical facilities and still she could attend to him. And I think probably he lived because of her medical assistance. So <laughs> there, there was no Dr. Deepak to guide them or to support them, but it was uh, Sureka who became the doctor and made that happen. 
Now, this is a story of sheer commitment, focus, determination and the attitude of never giving up. And that is what she did not only with herself, but during this particular chapter number 32, where I read the chapter in detail and on how every moment of life, she stood with him like a rock and made sure that in spite of the oxygen being totally consumed, which was for her emergency use, she did not become conjuice on that oxygen, gave it to him and made sure that the oxygen of her life survives the situation that they were facing in that God forsaken mountains. So that's how they have lived their life together and bonded together. Uh, well, the chapter number 37 again is a very interesting chapter. It is dancing with life and that's what she's done all her life, especially the last 33 years. In the roller coaster ride of my life, filled with years of challenges and stressful days, I found solace in diverse pursuits. Over 33 years, I persevered drawing strength from the resilience instilled in me since childhood. So where does this resilience come in from? When, a, when we talk about a human being who has been a winner all his life, especially people who have got victory over death, who have got victory over cancer, who have got victory over medication. What is their background? And yes, she has explained it so beautifully. My driving force was always the commitment to being at everything that I set out to do, even through pain and storm battered days, I found within the fortitude to press forward. There are a very few people who don't mind falling. The best part is even when they fall, they fall forward. I feel, uh, Sureka, you are one such personality. Often when I look back at the milestone of my life's journey, I feel content with the realization that even in the face of adversity, life continued to be abundant with opportunities to thrive. This has led me to form a steadfast belief that regardless of obstacles, we can always strive for something meaningful in life. And let me read out to her list of accomplishments, which uh, I'm sure nobody should ask me or we should not ask each other on what we have achieved in life because her list, in spite of the challenges that she has had, is so long and impressive that you will be stunned. So some of her accomplishments are she has been doing basket. She has been a basketball university champion, hockey university player, table tennis player, school vice president, yoga practitioner. She has done a teacher's training course at Tridha. She has done a Montessori teacher's training course. She has been a tutor. She has managed the computer institute as the head of the institute. She has been a nutritionist. She has been a general counselor. And last but not the least, she has also been a voiceover artist. So can we clap for her for this kind of achievement in spite of living with cancer the last 33 years and she has not given up on any of these achievements. In fact, even today, she is practicing her yoga, being a voiceover artist and doing a lot of activities that keeps her life going. The last chapter that I would like to share with you is a chapter which has got a very beautiful title, Beyond the Scars. Woven over 33 years are threads of survival, resilience and triumph. Each surgery, each stitch encapsulates my journey where scars are not merely wounds healed, but an ode to a spirit that adamantly refused to yield. Amidst the myriad surgeries, I discovered strength, resilience and an unwavering will to thrive and survive. To be precise, I have consumed 84,207 tablets in my journey through ailments. As far as I remember, I never skipped the tablets except on occasions like when I had taken Raj from the Army Hospital to Mangan Hospital and eventually to Manipal Hospital in Sikkim for treatment. I am always extra cautious but on a few occasions in a rush of hurry, I consumed extra doses for which I experienced immediate side effects. However, with the help of doctors in my family, I could timely manage the crisis. Likewise, I consumed innumerable homeopathy pills on this journey. As we all know, the quantum, that is the number of pills, is quite high as compared to allopathy tablets. Hence, I have not gotten into counting the same, but leave it to the readers. In addition to this, I have also taken Ayurvedic treatment for some time, I will not get into the calculation of how many liters of kada and allopathy syrup or liquids I have consumed till date. So friends, 
this book is definitely going to be a inspiration for a lot many number of people i think all of us needs to take this book buy this book and gift it to as many people as possible because inspiration from real life experiences like surekha's will be the best motivation that people can have it was so heartening to listen to uh, neha athavle on the experience that she shared at such a tender age i think people like surekha are inspiration for millions of people around the world so i had read somewhere that i cried for good shoes till i saw a boy with no legs and when we read books like this i think this book will really bring marital bliss to so many couples this book will bring so many individual closer to each other this book will mend and blend so many relationships this book is so creatively written from the heart of the author who has experienced a life that we have only read or understood or heard from somebody else she has actually lived this moments all her life i used to love telling people that i like to read people who have read a lot of books i have got lovely friends in my life like acp retired acp sham pardesi from whom i have learned so much and i take pride in saying that i have interacted with mr athavle so many times and learned so many things from him i have learned so many things from mr sanjay govilkar but friends when you read a book written so passionately by a cancer survivor who has definitely conquered the evils of cancer trust me it's a totally different experience altogether this is one of the best books that i have ever read and the inspiration is if i can bring 10% of what i have written what i have read in this book if i can write 10% of such passion in the next book that i write i'm sure it is going to be a award winner so congratulations surekha you are an inspiration and my request and my suggestion is as an author the next journey of an author has to be talks you need to go on platforms and talk and interact and discuss this book because this book can be syllabus to so many people this book can be a guiding light to so many people that they will definitely see light not only at the other end of the tunnel but also at the beginning of the tunnel so congratulations once again yeah, god bless yeah, you in abundance and grateful for uh, me to be a part of this event and thankful to each one present here because i feel the most important resource in anybody's life is time anybody in a city busy city like mumbai attending such a kind of an event is like giving a portion of your life to the person that you respect admire and love that is what each one of you has done of you have done so on their behalf this is also my gratitude to each one of you thank you so much have a god blessed evening and a god blessed future thank you so much and congratulations once again thank you